present here, I welcome you all to this very important occasion. An occasion that will forever change the lives of thousands of households across our country. I have taken note of the repeated request by the president that those of us who have a bit of knowledge, we should advise him. But I'm also conscious of the fact that we have been advising him and he seems not to understand exactly what our advice is. So I thought today we should do a practical demonstration of what a farmer startup park must look like. In our spirited effort to achieve a poverty-free Zambia through the creation of wealth at household level, I'm proud today to officially launch the Forum for Democracy and Development Agriculture Startup Grant Program for small-scale farmers, for resource-poor households, for poverty-stricken households. And this program is aimed at supporting farmers with various high-value agro-products for a period of three years to enable them to generate incomes and move, move them from peasantry to self-reliance. It is equally divine to provide technical support that will enable the farmer to increase productivity and diversify into agro-processing to add value to their produce. You see, to date, when the government goes to a farmer, they will give them two bags. The current physic program, I was in Ipafu before the police found out that I was in Kitwe for more than five days. I went to Ipafu and I came across a, an agricultural co cooperative with 60 members, they told me that they have received five fissi packs. The five fissi packs are composed of the following. Two bags of decompound and two bags of urea and one bag of maize, which is a 25 kg maize seed bag. But this is a group of 60 people. They have received five. Five times two, ten. That is 20 bags of fertilizer. Even at the very minimum, that is only about 2.5 hectares of maize. This is the point I'm making that next year, colleagues, we are going to be in trouble. This country, for the first time, will be on the UN list of countries needing food support because many of our children are going to starve. You can't imagine that 60 members of a cooperative in Impafu, all they have received for this season is 20 pockets of uh, 50 kg bags of fertilizer. And in a household, we believe there are on average 10 members of a household. Ideally, for a household to survive in one season, they need close to 10 bags of maize to survive just to eat. Don't talk about the school fees, the medication, and everything. Our governments don't think that people need to go to the hospital, people need to send their children to school. So it is in this spirit that, uh, as a party, we believe that uh, farmers in Zambia need to be assisted for a period of three years. When we are in government, we, we will aggressively pursue the idea of wealth creation in households using the agricultural sector. As a party, we have embarked on a vigorous program on empowering farmers by providing them with soya bean, soya bean seed, sunflower, and vegetable seed. And uh, by the way, we believe that every farmer needs a minimum of a hectare of a viable cash crop. Soya being properly managed can generate four tons of soya, especially the seed that we have from a MRI. It's a theoretical yield is 4.5 tons. To produce a hectare of maize, our farmers are going to continue to be resource poor. When you grow sunflower, 
you can be sure that a family will generate the cooking oil because there are a lot of younger places in the field. They will make soya cake that will be available for as, as animal feed and they'll be able to sell as oil seed. There are a lot of companies that are looking for oil seed and soya cake. Right now, if you go to livestock services, there's a shortage of soya cake. Namibia is looking for soya cake. Botswana is looking for soya cake. DRC is looking for soya cake. So there are opportunities in the agricultural sector away from copper that can, that can make this country rich. But someone has to do the, take the practical step and demonstrate that a farmer needs at least a hectare of a viable cash crop. We have said as a party, as we can first, that for the first three years when we are in government, farmers will get grants for three years to grow as much as they want. If they want to do five hectares of soya, we shall provide that as a grant. If they want to do 10 hectares of maize, it should be provided. And only in the fourth year should we then turn them off to the commercial sector. We believe at that time they will be strong enough to be able to stand on their own. The program that we called you for here, dear friends, will have an initial impact on 4,000 farmers. This will include women from Chadiza, Chipata, Chisamba, Sanfia, Kawambwa. We have already been to uh, Monze at Chief Chomo. We've already delivered the seed. Uh, Mr. Piri just came back from Chadiza. All these groups are waiting, and uh, they are already in place. Only those farmers who demonstrate to us that they have a hectare we, shall we give them seed for that hectare? This package includes herbicides because we are tired of see, seeing our women bending hours on end, picking up grass in their fields. So we are going to give them pre emergence herbicides for each farm because we want to demonstrate that this program can yield the desired results that are required. A farmer once tutored, a farmer once carried by the hand can produce, but you don't give them main seed and turn your back on them and leave them weeding and breaking their backs. We are going to give them full packages. There are sprayers that are going with this package. So for every, every group that we, we touch and reach, we're going to go back supervise them, make sure that the planting is correct. Because you can't just deliver soya bean. Some of you will plant it as if it's a ordinary beans from Nakonde. There's a specific way that you plant sunflower and soya bean for it to yield. So besides that, every one of these 4,000 farmers will have access to a market. So that we can demonstrate that it is possible to move our people out of abject poverty. As you may be aware, small-scale farmers contribute more than 80% of all the food crops that we produce as a country. The bulk of these farmers who are breaking their backs to feed our nations are women. The sad reality, however, is that the majority of these farmers, despite their hard work and sacrifice, live in dehumanizing poverty and deprivation. This is a direct result of bad agriculture policies that successful governments have pursued. Agriculture, which, we, which should be a cornerstone of our economic growth and nation development, has grossly been mismanaged by our colleagues in the government. The budgeted allocation this year is nothing to sing about. Time has come for us to empower our farmers with high value crops and other agro products that can generate enough income for families and create employment for our people. Diversification cannot continue to be a, a story that every successful government comes as diversified, diversified. It's like a dress we wear every day. Even a dress you can change. Right now, when our leader says that uh, China has impacted on every country on the continent, it only indicates that he doesn't consult his colleagues when they meet at the AU. There is one country on the continent which is doing extremely well, and that's Ivory Coast. President Ouattara is just pushing his farmers
to grow cocoa and cashew nuts. And Ivory Coast is boasting of a, a growth rate of 10%. And things are changing in Ivory Coast. The women are happy, the youths are happy, and that's why they've given him a massive vote. You can't get a massive vote if you deprive your people of the means of livelihood. But here, while President Watara is earning money from cocoa and, and cashew nuts, our people are burning cashew nut trees in Western Province for charcoal, because charcoal has become the most uh, lucrative business in our, on our, in our land. And I think that something has to be done. We are passionately, we passionately appeal to our cooperating partners and the other stakeholders to support us financially. Because if what we have contributed as a party to go by is anything to go by, if as a small political party, they normally say it now is a one-woman party. If a one-woman party can support 4,000 farmers, how about a government which can charter a plane to New York with $300,000? Sure, you can buy more sunflower. We have trained our people to do sunflower. We are not only doing uh, this program as a, a crops. We are supplying broiler chips. We have even some of our people we met in the field, when we ask them what they would want to do, because the way we do our program, we ask people what they want to do. Some will tell you they want to keep goats. These are some of the activities that we believe the government can take up and, and do. These researchers have done the research, but they have not been funded. And I think that this is the purpose of this meeting, that our research assistants in the Ministry of Agriculture require a budget to implement the wealth of knowledge that they have. Unfortunately, they don't have the support. They just sit in their research centers and they cannot implement these programs. We thought that uh, this little contribution should be seen that uh, we want to advise our government practically. Maybe when we say it, it is not said in the language that they understand. But when we do it, maybe you members of the press can give them the clip and let them study it and put up a bit more because I believe that next <coughs> day it's not only hunger that we're going to face, a lot of our children are going to be out of school. There will be no incomes in any of our households. It's already happening. University place is 26,000. How can you send your child to university when you only receive a physical pack composed of two bags of D and two bags of urea? I hope that all of you will support us with this program. We intend to make sure that it succeeds. I'll be the first president that you see supervising planting in the field. I think the last one we knew who supervised planting was the late Dr. Ngwazi Kamuz Banda, uh, president of Malawi. After that, all we see is our heads of state who like to go maybe to a mine, they like to commission a project. No one wants to go and see how my grandmother in Chinyinji is <coughs> struggling to plant sunflower, groundnuts, or soya beans. Thank you very much, members of the press. Yeah. I declare this program officially launched. This is the FDD farmer uh, support program which is basically meant as a startup packs. FDD farmer startup packs. And we are saying startup because every farmer in this country needs to start their life. When you say support, they know that you are going to bring a bag of minimum, but we want farmers to be independent. Yeah.